Faith is like life. It's binary. You're either in or you're out. You're on or you're off, alive or dead, here or there. When secularism tries to replace God and truth with a better idea, they're desperate to eliminate the identities of life, truth, light, and love. They become terms subject to revision instead of God identities. It's all to persuade you to defer your power of choice for a new doctrine of tolerance, equity, subjective morality. Regardless of what this new politically correct religion is, the trade costs you all of your authority, your power for true life. You end up in the backseat chauffeured into oblivion. Do you want the Proverbs 22 for life? I know you do. Well, take responsibility and quit blaming everybody. Joseph of Genesis was sold into slavery by his brothers, falsely accused of rape by the Egyptian Me Too movement. And then he spent years in prison. He didn't blame anyone. He chose to believe on God. And guess what? God promoted him to the palace. You will never be able to steer for your life until you own it. Blame gets you nowhere. So what happened to me after that talk with God about being bankrupt of the blessings in Proverbs 22, verse 4? I owned it. I said, obviously, I'm kidding myself. I'm not walking in humility, and I'm not really worshiping God, even though, check this out, I was a, a worship leader for churches and youth conferences. I owned it. The moment I did that, everything changed. Doors opened up. Clarity came to my mind. My small decision started lining up with the big decision to take responsibility for choosing life. I suddenly had authority that worked. So you may not be a believer at this moment. Maybe you're a seeker, you're seeking, you're looking for the truth. You might have tried secularism, Marxism, or even witchcraft. Maybe naturalism. Naturalists get excited about the environment, a science that seems to give them a form of control. People like Bill Nye, the science guy, he believes that there's an anti-science epidemic contaminating our culture. He, along with his producers, have this anti-God, anti-religion, humanistic worldview. The absolutes of God's word, the Christian faith, are all a threat to their atheistic worldview. They have this astonishing belief in life that that life is without intelligent design. It's all just random, it's chance. Kind of like enjoying the fruit of a tree but denying the root of the tree, so to speak. I don't know anything about basketball. And even I can tell you that you need more than a ball. You've gotta have a hoop, you gotta have some boundaries. Otherwise, there's no game, there's no points, there's no way to even um, calculate the points. There is a point to life a true why for your existence. Without the wisdom, you become just another angry, lost soul, claiming life has no point because you refuse the basics of life, the answer to who, what, and why. I said in part two, we become who we are when we believe who God is, who the intelligent designer is. This is key to all of our lives, key to life.